Let's shift gears to somebody who isn't a victim but thinks he is, and that is Prince Harry, who <sighs> is finally going to tell his story. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he's going to come out with it in his autobiography after the gazillion interviews he and his wife have given about their poor lives. Um, their castle's too small. I don't know if you heard, but it was too small. Or treated so poorly, he had to duck when he went through the doorways. <laughs> okay, it's that's hard them. for him. It's so hard when your castle's too tiny. Um, he's given two interviews now, which are being previewed. ITV, that's the that's the station that, you know, asked Meghan Markle the question, like, in the middle of Africa, like, how are you? She said, like, thank you for asking. <laughs> because no one has. Right, because we're focused on Africa. Okay, that's why no one asked you. Anywho, they go back to the same reporter. He's promoting his autobiography, which hits in like a week or so. And uh, here's just a little sampling of what poor, poor Prince Harry is saying in SOT 1. It never needed to be this way. The leaking and the planting. I want a family, not an institution. They feel as though it's better to keep us somehow as the villains. They've shown absolutely no willingness to reconcile. I would like to get my father back. I would like to have my brother back. They've shown no, no willingness to reconcile. Gee, I wonder why. What do you, why do you think the family doesn't want to get back together right now? Does anyone, raise your hand if you got a thought. I, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> Emily? Uh, you know, it could have something to do with the publicity tour uh, that has included so many broadsides at his family and accusations of them leaking to the press as though Harry and Meghan have never, they would never stoop so low as to plant <laughs> stories and leak things to tabloids. That is just not their style. They prefer to go and make millions over at Netflix, um, but they would never stoop so low as to plant stories in the tabloids. It's just, it's like actually very, very sad um, because there are grandchildren involved. There's this family itself. And then the country, of course, that has relied on the sort of stoicism for whatever it's worth. Listen, I'm glad we don't have a monarchy here, but if you're going to have a monarchy, I mean, this is just uh, you know, pretty sad for the entire country. It's so disrespectful. Um, and I'm sad to say it's becoming sort of profoundly American. It's sort of fitting that they moved to America and became whiny, nar whiny narcissists along the lines of what Christopher Why Lash Why do we have to get described. saddled with them? They'd say said in their documentary they were considering South Africa. Why didn't they go? Why didn't they go there? How did we get stuck with them? Um, he adds Because they know we reward his, this stuff. They know they can go to Netflix true. and be like, give me money because I'm going to whine. It's true. It's a terrible reflection on us. And let's not forget, she's an American too. My kids just the other day were like, mom, Abby was here. My daughter goes, mom, are you a celebrity? And I said, no, absolutely not. And uh, she looked up the definition. It was like, you know, I don't know, whatever. But I'm like, no, some people know who I am, but no. And she goes, do you think that you're the most famous Megan in the world? And I'm like, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, so in any event, sadly, this other woman who, you know, she's definitely the best known Megan and she's bringing down the name and she's bringing down the country. Um, here's some more whining he did to Anderson Cooper over on 60 Minutes. And I will just submit to you, I want you to listen to the way Anderson Cooper teased this up because I believe this is such a joke. He's straw manning the arguments against these people to tee up. To me, this is a classic example of something that was prearranged where he knew Her Prince Harry wanted to say something and Anderson asked exactly the right question to get him there because the way Anderson phrases the complaint of the world against Harry is not quite right. We'll get to that, but listen for it. Here's Sot 2. One of the criticisms that you've received is that, well, okay, fine, you want to move to California, you want to step back from the institutional role. Why be so public? You say... You try to do this privately. And every single time I've tried to do it privately, there have been briefings and leakings and planting of stories against me and my wife. You know, the family motto is never complain, never explain. But it's just a motto. And it doesn't really hold... There's a lot of complaining and a lot of explaining. And Private being done in through leaks. Through leaks. They will feed or have a conversation with the correspondent. And that correspondent will literally be spoon-fed information and write the story. And then the bottom of it... They will say that they've reached out to Buckingham Palace for comment. Mm. But the whole story is Buckingham Palace commenting. So when we're being told for the last six years, we can't put a statement out to protect you, but you do it for other members of the family, there becomes a point when silence is betrayal. 
just a small nit, but he says there becomes a point instead of there comes a point. And he he's made so many grammatical errors. If you listen to that Netflix documentary, this guy, ironically, is not very well educated. I went to public school in upstate New York. I take him on any day, intellectually, any day. And what he did to Eaton and all the private tutors, bring it, Harry. It, okay, there comes a point, my friend. That's how you say it. There comes a point, not there becomes a point. Anywho, um, the, the criticism of these two is not that their complaints about their family went public. Yes, some people have said that. Okay, it's not like nobody's raised it. But the, the privacy complaint against them is that they ostensibly wanted a more private life. They wanted to be left alone. They, and then they never stopped giving interviews ever, right? They gave them to everyone. So Anderson tees it up like, why? Why just? Why not just handle this privately? And then, of, of course, Harry's like, because I'm surrounded by evil villains who leaked everything I said. Um, there was obviously a way for them to leave their royal roles and stay in England and continue servicing the people of England. You know, there are plenty of royals who are not working royals. They chose to leave in a huff because they wanted the attention, because they're brats, because they wanted to get $100 million from Netflix in telling their story. That's actually what happened here. It's not about, oh, we tried to resolve it properly privately and we couldn't. So we had no choice but to bring these matters out into the open. Bullshit. They wanted the money. They were filming that Netflix thing for months, well before Megxit, right? So the whole thing is, is based on a lie. And now we all just help him continue with his wine-a-thon. Uh, let me ask you, Eliana, because even Politico, Politico did a piece on them a week or so ago, listing them as number one in the, quote, narcissists that we have become sick of as a society. They had them, they had Elizabeth Holmes, they had some bad people in that group. Um, and so I do wonder whether people are getting it here in America and they've had it. I don't think we're there yet. Um, what is so interesting to me about um, Harry's interview is I think there's a lot of projection going on. He talks about the uh, the royal skillful use of the press. Uh, you know, two could play at that game. And I think it's precisely what Harry and, Harry and Meghan are doing and about their desire for privacy. In reality, um, Harry and Meghan have traded one type of celebrity, the celebrity of the British monarchy, for another type of celebrity, Hollywood celebrity. They clearly didn't desire privacy. In reality, I think um, those uh, members of the British monarchy probably have more privacy than Harry and Meghan um, have now. Um, they are playing out their messy family dramas in the headlines. It's not just Harry. It's also Meghan, um, who is, um, uh, whose father, uh, who's having fights with her father. Um, but, but when you listen to Harry, I think it's just a crash course in the tactics that he and his wife are you are using to get what they want. And he had a sophisticated course in this, giving his upbringing and the use of the press and the tabloids and the best schools. And I don't know, Megan, I'm just going to take a guess, given that, you know, you mentioned your uh, grammar and writing skills and elocution are slightly better than his. I'm thinking he probably wasn't admitted on the merits. Uh, and maybe wasn't subject to the most rigorous grading at these Tony British schools. <laughs> You could be right. You could be right. Uh, whereas I got in on the merits at Syracuse. Yeah, they University. may have gone a little, <laughs> little soft on him. <laughs> um, this thing about the press, I love what you just said. Um, th that he's used the same tactics uh, that he accuses the royal family of using. This came out in their, you know, they sued the Daily Mail for defamation. It came out like Omid Scobie. Who's he with, Deb? Is he in Vanity Fair? Harper's Bazaar. Okay, Omid Scobie is their stenographer. He is Meghan and Harry's stenographer. He's purportedly a royal correspondent. Bullshit. All he does is write down what they, according to, use Harry's word, uh, through leaks, they will they will feed or have a conversation with a correspondent. And that correspondent will literally be spoon-fed information and write the story. And so that's exactly what this guy does for them. And then at the bottom of it, it will say Buckingham Palace refused comment. He says, but the whole thing is Buckingham Palace commenting. That's exactly what Harry and Meghan do. By the way, it's what virtually everybody in media does. If I could tell you the number of negative stories that have been written about me, that I understand 100% who is behind it, an institution that may or may not have employed me, and then at the bottom they say, oh, this organization 
was not available for comment. Meanwhile, the whole thing has been drafted by that organization. It's very obvious. It's disgusting. It's toxic. It's nasty. But they're not in some special place. They're public figures. This is what comes with the role. Get over it and grow up. (laughs) <laughs> and they want to make money off of being public figures. And that's what drives me crazy right. about this media coverage of them. Remember, what was it, ABC, who let Oprah interview them without really disclosing the extent of their personal relationship? She lives like right down the street in Montecito, which is like the most beautiful place in the world. Um, and they let Oprah do this like allegedly hard hitting interview. But what that benefit that benefits Harry and Meghan and they know it because they traffic on their reputation. Like that's how they make money. That's how they go to Netflix and say, give me money, money me now. Uh, the Charlie Day quote from It's Always Sunny. That's how they do it um, is because they can say, listen, we're doing really well at these interviews with ABC. We can get, talk to CBS. We can talk to Anderson Cooper whenever we want. He's going to give us a positive platform. We're going to come out looking great. And it's the journalists who talk to them. They don't, they're not entitled to positive media coverage. I mean, look at the trajectory of public opinion about Meghan Markle. It has nothing to do with her politics. It has nothing to do with her race. People generally liked her until she started publicly acting like a brat. And then public opinion of her tanked. It's just completely logical. Um, But they don't want to accept that. And neither do the journalists who cover them because they want to pretend they want to use uh, these straw men um, and say this is uh, this is about politics. This is about racism because they think that's good for their ratings. That's what they believe ideologically because they live in these bubbles. And meanwhile, Harry and Meghan are making millions and millions of dollars off of this nonsense. It's a new year. So let's make 2023 all about a new you. Thanks to Genuzel Skincare, you can look 5, 10, even 15 years younger. During the GenuCell New Year's clearance event, save over 70% off. 70. GenuCell's most popular package, all their best stuff to take care of all your skincare needs. See yourself with those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, sagging jawline, dark skin marks, skin redness, and even those under eye bags gone right before your eyes. You really can make a big difference on these things. GenuCell works for women and men and it's safe for all skin types and perfect for skin of any age. With its immediate effects product, GenuCell will promise results to you that will make you smile guaranteed or 100% of your money back. Right now, GenuCell's top-selling hyaluronic acid serum is included absolutely free in every one of their most popular packages. Enjoy maximum skin hydration for a more youthful appearance. Go to jennycell.com slash MK60 and enter MK60 at checkout. Every order automatically upgraded to free shipping for the new year. Don't wait. Go to jennycell.com slash MK60, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.